Hi, my name is Mike. I work with the engineering department on Jurgis product for Clark Reliance. The purpose of today's video is to show you how to adjust the trip, the trip switch point on a caged vertical or horizontal float or displacer operated level switch. So first things first is safety. If you're on the field, uh, you want to make sure you've got glasses or anything else for personal, uh, for PPE. Um, if you're working on live wires, please make sure obviously that they've been disconnected and that your safety is ensured that way. Uh, here we're just going to be working on the bench, so all that's been taken care of and we can kind of just proceed from that point. Um, so, uh, you're going to need a couple of tools to get this done. One, you'll want a marker. You'll need a 5 16 wrench and or socket driver. And depending on if you have um, an SA4 enclosure or if you have an SA7 enclosure, you're going to need either a 7 16 inch wrench or a um, Allen wrench, Allen keys, and or something to um, a long bar so we can help kind of pry off the tops. So uh, we're going to start over here with our SA4 and first thing we're going to do is take the head off. We're going to take our 7 16 wrench. There's a screw on top of the SA4 and that's what holds the whole thing together. So the first thing that we're going to do is just take it off. Make sure when you're taking it off that the washer that's underneath the head doesn't get lost. There's a little catch mechanism underneath so you should be able to just loosen it up enough keeping it still in the head and pull the whole thing off like that. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is take a marker and where this bracket meets the pressure tube, you're going to want to make a line. With that line, you now know where your starting point is. What you're gonna to wanna to do from there is take either the 5 16 wrench or your socket driver, and you're gonna to wanna to loosen the screw. Turn this around real quick. There's one on every switch. It just goes right on and it's a set screw. So we'll loosen it up. Say we wanted to move it up or down, we simply use our line that is now on the back as a reference point. And you can move it as much as you need to for whatever your switch trip point is that you're trying to attain. And then, you simply put the screw back into position. Simple as that. One thing that you're going to want to make sure that you do, no matter which switch you have, move it up or down, before you put it back in, you're going to want to cycle test it. You're going to want to make sure that the switch can still trip um, wherever the level is rising and falling. They didn't move it too far out of the way of operation so that it might trip on but won't reset or vice versa or that you moved it too far and it's completely out of the way at all. If you have an SA7, we're gonna do the exact same steps except to get inside, we're gonna take our Allen, put it into the set screw, loosen it up, and if you need to, put a long bar, long screwdriver into the notches on top, the castellations, and you can turn There's a lot of threads on here. We kind of got things started, but it'll come right off. Same rules apply. Take your pen, marker, make a line, move it up or down as you need to, to whatever gets you the point that's gonna get you the trip point that you're looking for. To put everything back together, just repeat, reverse those steps. Put the head on. Screw it down all the way until you've covered all the threads so the cap, the cover meets the base. Tighten up the set screw. And over on the SA4, put the lid back on. And then we'll tighten up our screw on top. Like I said, if you want to um, put this back in the field, we highly recommend that you check the, um, check the actuation point that you do a little bench test. There's a lot of ways you can do that. One, you're not gonna have access all the time, but if you can get it to go up and down, you can hear it clicking. If it's light enough and you're on the bench, 
you can just simply move it side to side and get the float. To go back and forth. So another method that you can use to simulate a level, which would then move the float to make sure that the switch is tripping, is you can go through the bottom, the bottom fitting, the bottom OLED. Uh, if you have access to, there's a little gap in the table here, but you can stick a rod from underneath. You'll run into the float. Just push it up till you hear the click. Drop it till you hear the click. With the float in the upward position or the float back down in the downward position, you want to check to make sure that the switch is tripped. You can use any standard meter which has continuity or ohms, um, and you can check to make sure that the trip has actuated in both directions. So all the steps we've gone over have been for a vertical switch. They're pretty much the same if you have a horizontal switch, except for the tripping direction. If you have a horizontal because they work in an opposite direction, um, if you want it to trip sooner, then you would actually move it up. And if you wanted it to trip later, you would actually move it down. Other than that, if you have a horizontal float, um, all the steps should be the same and just follow all the other steps uh, accordingly.